Hello there, Year 10 Mathematicians. Mr. Herman here. And this will be the new topic starting into Term 4 from the Strand Statistics and Probability, the topic being Chance. <clears throat> and this is Lesson 1. We're just going to be looking at the terminology uh, of uh, statistics and probability, and more specifically chance, and what experimental probability is. Our learning goal is to look at the language of probability, what an event is, and how to find the chance of an event. And the success criteria is to find the chance of a desirable event through decimal, fraction, and percentage format. Now, I'm not gonna jump straight into an example like I usually do. Um, there is a lot of language involved with <clears throat> probability and statistics because like the likelihood, no pun intended, um, of the type of questions that you will get is going to be very word heavy. And so it's good to get the type of, uh, good to get exposure to the type of language that, that will be used and that we'll be used to seeing um, looking further into this topic. <clears throat> so this right here is a screen grab of some of the the words that uh, I had my students write down when I asked them what they thought of when it came to probability and, and statistics and some of the questions they were exposed to within the first, first lesson. And you can see here that a lot of these words, hopefully by now being in year 10, that you have seen before. So probability, statistics, uh, which is obviously the, <laughs> the two uh, first words within the, the strand. Chance, percentage, complement, likelihood, um, unlikeliness, which seems like a, a very abstract word, um, but it, it does it does pop up. Venn diagram, PR, which is notation, uh, money, decimals, odds, question, coins, dice, playing cards, spinner, um, fraction numbers, and chart and table. I think the most common ones that you will see. Um, in regards to how you will write a, a, an answer out for chance is percentage, decimals, and fractions or fraction numbers. These three are the three main ways that we can represent the likelihood of an event happening. And regardless of what that event is, um, these are the three main ways. Uh, percentage being the most common way. Um, followed by fractions, and then lastly, decimals. Um, the thing is that if I were to write some type of number, say for instance, 50%, or 0 0.5, or 1 over 2, percentage, decimal, and fraction, they all mean the same thing when it talks to uh, when, it, when it talks about the chance or the likelihood of something happening. Um, but we're just so used to this format percentage because this is the most common language in uh, Western culture. Um, and saying that, if someone were to say, oh, what's the likelihood of it raining tomorrow? And you said, oh, 0 0.5, they are technically, they're not wrong. It's just not as common to see this type of answer. Um, or if you were to say half, again, that's a bit more common. 50% is probably, or 50-50 or is probably the, the most uh, common way that you'll hear. Um, some other notation that you will see uh, is this little PR here. And PR, uh, it just means probability. Uh, instead of writing probability every single time, what is the probability of obtaining? Having to write this down constantly, uh, it can get quite an annoying. And you should know by now that mathematicians, um, they're all about shortcuts. So we just use P. Uh, um, a Venn diagram is a way of representing uh, different types of information. So a Venn diagram, and we will look into this into different uh, lessons. You've probably heard of this diagram, but it's just something that looks like this with two circles that overlap and certain categories lie within here, within the intersection, within here, and then within the outside. Uh, we'll be looking into this quite a bit as well. Uh, complement um, and, and unlikeliness uh, kind of correlate to each other and they kind of technically mean the same thing. Uh, again, we'll look in, into that. Um, all the other words just have uh, different types of examples of how to um, or what to find with chance wise within a question. So, um, three coins were flipped or a dice was rolled 
or from a standard 52 card playing card deck what's the likelihood of XYZ so um, you will get used to this uh, seeing all of these types of um, things that we use in order to determine the chance of something happening now very important chance what does chance mean put put plain simply chance is just the possibility the possibility of an event happening of an event happening and what this topic looks into is how we figure out what that possibility is and how we represent that possibility and we kind of already know so these three main formats percentage decimals and fractions now you can associate words to to percentages and fractions so unlikely likely very likely etc um I'm not going to delve too much into that. Maybe at the start we will, but I'm more interested in the mathematics behind finding out these these figures. Um, so this is just a little introduction to the key terminology. What we'll be looking into next is what experimental probability is. So experimental probability. Don't let the name uh, mislead you. It's not daunting. Um, experimental probability. This is a life cycle of experimental probability. We make a prediction of some sort and then we experiment through either uh, trials or tests and then we write a conclusion based on that probability um, and that conclusion can be written of some sort but you can also just give a percentage um, a percentage of some sort generally speaking so that's all there is to it with experimental probability and the best example I can think of is say for instance we had three coins okay so three coins um, which I'll put here um, and we want to look with these three coins we want to look into um, all the different scenarios All the different scenarios where the three coins a tail um, is landed either on all of them on one of them on two of them um, or none of them yeah, so this is a scenario how many tails how many can or can have tails this is fairly simple because we can either have zero tails, one tail, two tails, or all of them three tails. So these are the three different types of scenarios that we can have. And what I'll do is I'll just draw up a table with this in mind. So here's my trusty little table. And so the number of tails, I'll just put T for short, we can either have zero, so let's say a scenario, I flip three coins, and I might have a scenario where there are zero tails, so all of them are head. There might be a scenario where one of them is a tail, and the other two are head. There might be a scenario where two of them are tails, and one of them is a head. Or there might be a scenario that all three of them are tails. So these are the four different scenarios we can get. Now on the bottom here, I've written frequency, and frequency just means the amount of times a certain scenario has happened now we don't know how many trials there are all right so a trial just is how many times how many times did i flip i flipped the three coins in this case trial is equal to 100 and this is just an arbitrary number um 100 is just probably the most um, consistent number when it comes to percentages and it makes it easy to deal with percentages um, so we'll just deal with 100 but technically we can have as many um, trials as we want obviously we don't have don't want to have too less of the amount of trials or else it makes the 
data that we get from our conclusion a little bit unreliable. Because if I were to do this maybe three times, it's not really a um, trustworthy worthy percentage to rely on. So here is my table filled out. And from this trial, again, just random numbers. I didn't actually do this. Um, actually <laughs> have a life. Um, so 11, 40, 36, and 13 for 0, 1, 2, 3, respectively. That just means that from the 100 trials that I did, 40 of these scenarios had one of the coin only had tail, where the other two had head. That's all that means. So this is our experiment. And now what we want to do is get the probability of certain scenarios. But in order to do this, we need to know a certain equation. So this is my formula here. The probability, and remember PR just means probability, of a certain event happening, and this is just based on experimental. The formula is pretty much the same <clears throat> for all types of probability. Um, it's just the wording is a bit different. This is just a fraction form. It's the desired <clears throat> outcomes, excuse me, on the top, over the total number of trials. So all we're doing is just finding two numbers. And it's really easy because one of these numbers is going to be consistent with any type of questions we get because we know the number of trials that we have. It's 100. It was determined at the start. So we know that the probability of a certain event happening will always be some type of number depending on the circumstance that has been given to us over 100 in this case. So we can then say, all right, well, what is the probability of obtaining one tail? <clears throat> and this is equal to, well, how many of these scenarios were there one tail? 40 over the total number of trials, 100. If the question said answer this in fraction form, this would be your answer. You can obviously simplify this down to 4 over 10 <clears throat> or 2 fifths. If you want this as a decimal format, it would be 0 0.4. And again, you would just use the SD button on your scientific calculator. Or if you want to have this as a percentage, this is just 40%. <clears throat> so there's a 40% chance that if I were to do this 100 times, um, that uh, I will get one tail within those um, 100 trials that we had. 40% likelihood or chance, 40 out of 100 out of them. Uh, so it's really simple. If you want to get the probability of maybe getting three tails, it would just be 13 over 100 or 13%. But what I want to look at is maybe a tricky question that looks into maybe the probability of at least, at least one tail. At least one tail. So of these scenarios here, 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 and here, how many of them have at least one tail? Well, this one has at least one tail. So does this one, and so does this, does this one. So the desired outcomes is the 40, plus the 36, plus the 13, and not this one, the 11, because that, there's no tail within that, um, within that scenario. And this is all over 100. Um, so that is 89 out of 100, or 89%.